we have this big green candle right there. I want you to notice that, that we have this big green candle right here. That big green candle again. Hey, what's going on, everybody? This is the Blockchain Backer bringing you today's cryptocurrency news and analysis. And right now, we are looking at two different XRP charts. And on the left, we have from 2017. On the right, we have from today's times. Now, we've been looking at this for quite a while now. So today, we, we've never really like dug super deep into it to look and see if we can like isolate anything on it but today we'll take a little bit of a closer look and see if we can find some other positive things going on in the cryptocurrency market because right now we've been beaten down with this fear for quite some time and fortunately now we're kind of getting out of the extreme fear which we've been in for several weeks and now we're just kind of into regular old normal fear <laughs> so here we are we've climbed our way out of here and we've gotten up here and i'm thinking man is that a positive sign you know is that like since the prices are still surprised press down it's almost like you could take that as being like a bullish divergence in sentiment with price still being suppressed but the sentiment is turning around so the sellers are not feeling like selling as much anymore first things first let's compare these two charts and see if we can figure out a little bit more and then what's my favorite tool to use and it's always fibonacci retracement so let's put a fibonacci retracement right here on this and see if we can figure out anything to do with this chart and then let's go ahead and put a fibonacci retracement on this one right there all right so before we like put this fibonacci right here on the current times on the right side of the chart we're, this is making an assumption that the bottom is already in right so one of the big cases that i've built that we've seen a lot is that there's the potential that this comes down to about 15 and a half cents which would put the fibonacci right here it would make it so we have a lot of reaction zones on this Fibonacci retracement by having it set up just like this. And that would take us all the way down to 15.4. Now you may be thinking, ah, oh, this is crazy. You can't really do this ahead of time. Oh, but you can. I've done this many, many times where you can kind of figure out the Fibonacci placement before the bottom ever gets put in and you can pinpoint the bottom using this strategy. Will it work here? I don't know. But it might so let's go back over here to the left side of the screen and look at 2017 and see if we have these same type of reactions and the first thing i think i can i can say about that is no it doesn't it does not do this where we have these multiple reactions on the fibonacci for this particular fractal this particular move down so let's shift this back up here just just for the the time being now if we look here you can see that we kind of do this fall down and then mess around here at the 0 0.702 fibonacci retracement back in 2017 we come down here and here's a way to draw this a little bit better right so it comes down like this bounces up comes down bounces up and then it goes down let me shift this over and you can see that a little bit better like that if you can get an understanding of what that is so is there the potential that this thing is reacting to the 0 0.702 right here could be don't know but it's interesting secondly if we take a look down here of when this thing call, completely falls down we, we fall all the way down here to about the 0 0.382 and we get a little bit below it and then we bounce back up to the 0 0.5 and get a little bit above that and then continue down right here what do we do we fall down to the 0 0.382 and get a little bit below it just like right here then we bounce up and get a little bit above the 0.5 right here, just like right here. Then we fall down and we do not go below the 0.236. We fall down. We do get slightly below the 236, but we hang out right there. And then we fire back up above the 0.382 and get right up in here. What do we do? We hold above the 0.236 and we fire up above the 0.382 and get right here. Okay, so I would say so far along here, this matches pretty good on the Fibonacci measurements. Next, what do we do? We go below the 0.236 and then we come up back above the 0.32. We go below the 236 and back up above the 0.382. And then we start going down all the way to the bottom with two big 
falls at the bottom and we have this big green candle right there. I want you to notice that, that we have this big green candle right here. So fall from above the 0.382 all the way to the bottom, fall from above the 0.382 all the way to the bottom. And what do we have right there? We've got that big green candle again with this consolidation thing, with this consolidation and then a breakdown to the downside. Are we getting ready to do this final little leg down where we go back just right near the bottom, which would not take us down to 15.5 cents, but would just take us down to right where we already are, maybe a hair lower, maybe not. But I think it's pretty, pretty interesting that we have something looking so incredibly similar from a Fibonacci perspective. Like if we want to line this up for our own Fibonacci analysis, I would put it right there. I would say, hey, look at all these reactions we have on the Fibonacci. This looks good to me. I would be expecting it to go to 15.5 cents. But that's why you've always heard me so many times say, look, I'm just accumulating down here because in the end, if this thing goes to 15.5 cents, am I going to be like super mad at myself for buying at 19 cents, buying at 18 cents? Like, let's go back and look at, let's go back and look at uh, history right here on this. Do you think this guy who was buying right here was ever called a dummy by anybody for not buying right there? Like, oh man, I can't believe you bought right there, dude. You could have bought it for like two cents lower, man. <laughs> like, I don't think there's, you know, I don't think that guy has ever been called a dummy in his life. I think that guy straight up is a genius, right? I think we could all agree that's what's up and and that's just what i'm doing right i am accumulating all of this stuff right here and i'm not going to sit there and guess with my whole stack which one's the bottom because well good luck everybody's been trying to do it it's darn near impossible so i've been in massive accumulation mode and i don't know if this thing's going to go down to 15.5 cents if this is not the fractal setup and we go back and it's actually like this thing well then it's not going to go there it's actually just going to come back test the bottom again real quick and then we go right every little bit of this matches there are slight differences the slight difference would be that right here uh, at this 0 0.702 it really kind of hangs below it and then just kind of hovers underneath it and then breaks whereas here we really kind of used it as that um like this you know we went like this and then went down if you get if you can kind of see that right there then the other difference in here is just that this does peak just below 0.236 whereas right here it did not that's this one right here and, and i know that you would think hey this looks more like this yeah kind of but it's not it, it's actually part of this I would say the case is much stronger at this point that the bottom is probably in than that it needs to go down to 15.5. And I can't put a percentage of confidence on that. I think it could be either one and a coin toss on it. But I know that I'm getting really, really antsy about it. And if we look at it from a time perspective, we would only be, we'd be less than a week away from getting up here. So that would be, you know, maybe at the start of the new year, you know, January 1st, when something like that happens. I can't really put a, a price date on something like that but i think we are all just kind of at this point of hey let's do this already right give us a little bit of relief so we'll see if we just get a relief rally or if we get something much much bigger than that i would expect more so i mean if we look at this structurally of what would happen our first good sign would be that we come back up to about 25 cents and then we just kind of mess around there for a little while and then break on out and get back up into this 30 cent range back up into this 30 cent range and then we are gone on. Now, there's no way to know if it's going to play out the exact same way, but boy, we can sure hope and we just have to wait and see. So we're getting there. Let me zoom this out here a little bit and we'll go back over here and copy that past fractal and see if this thing, you know, if it did just play out just like that and go from here, what would the price be right now on this explosion? And that would be about $14. Not hard to do math on what you'd have there. If you have like 10,000 XRP, you would have like $140,000. How many would that take to get you to a millionaire? Let's run some math real fast. Here we go, right? So $1 million divided by 14. Hey, if you've got 71,000 XRP and you held it, and you just had nerves of steel to carry it all the way to right there at 14. Congratulations, you're a 
a millionaire at that moment in time. So we'll see how this all plays out. I'm getting pretty pretty antsy and excited about it and also if you've watched any of my videos i personally believe that 14 dollars is not the top i do expect it to go quite a bit higher than just 14. that's kind of just the starting point for this fractal i've used a lot of fibonacci retracement and fibonacci analysis to forecast where i think the top is and i do think it is beyond 14 dollars. it's always like this right okay so in you're learning this lesson right so let's say we do get this huge bull run that comes up next right and and this thing goes super parabolic and then you know a bunch of new people come into this market and they say man you are so lucky that you bought down there you've got to just remind them it's all about buying the dip there was nothing easy about buying down here I think we can all agree on that this was hard this is not easy to be a buyer here because you have these doubts, right? You have these these questionable things on what you're doing. Like, is this really the smartest thing to be doing, to continuing to be buying as it's going down and down and down? And then one day we'll get rewarded and we'll look like geniuses. But when you're living in the actual moment, it is very difficult. And I remember in 2017, there was a term for all the people who were in like 2013, 2014, 2015, 2016. Everybody in 2017 would call these people OGs, which was old gangsters. And they were called old gangsters because they had been around for a long time. They had owned their stacks and their bags since really low. And I can't wait to the day to where I come on here and I go, hey, what's going on, everybody? This is the blockchain backer, the OG, bringing you the latest cryptocurrency news and analysis. And man, that day will come. <laughs> but we've got to get through this first and I think we're just about there. So let's move on over to Bitcoin and I want to show you some of the positive things I'm seeing over on Bitcoin because right now Bitcoin's leading the whole market and telling telling everybody what to do. So here you go. This is our entire 2018-2019 bear bull bull bear market. Over here we were talking a lot about wanting to see that we'd get a lower low with a higher RSI in order to see some type of bullish divergence on the daily time frame. Good news, we got it. So let's zoom in here, take a look at this, and look at all the bullish divergences we're showing. So this is dating back to about, we have bullish divergences that lead us back till September. So September, October, November, December. We have three months of building up bullish divergences on the daily time frame. And a bullish divergence is where you have price that is declining and you have relative strength that is increasing, which means that the sellers are getting weaker and weaker. So right here we look and we see that this is when we were massively oversold. And then we came back and went into oversold conditions again with a lower price than we were here however the selling was weaker and then once again we got one more sell-off that went even lower in price and we had even weaker sellers but we still went into oversold conditions also we do have a bullish divergence right here we could see that right here we have a declining price with an increasing relative strength index now if we pull up the macd we could see the same thing that we have the bullish divergence occurring right here where price is decreasing right here we also have it right here here to here so we are showing that bullish divergences are occurring on bitcoin and we are rounding out a potential bottom right now which i have been very vocal about that i have perceived to be right there and we've not quite gotten there yet but we've gotten pretty dang close and i'm open to the idea that the bottom is already in but i'm also open to the idea that we test right there i'm under the belief that i don't think we're going to break below that i think that would be it but time will tell and we will see all right guys that's going to wrap it up for this one thank you so much for watching please like this video and subscribe to my channel to get updates on when i release new videos as always this is not investment advice and i am not a financial advisor but if you ever need a pick me up or a little bit of reassurance just remember that the blockchain backers got your back have a good one <laughs>